Hello lovely people, how are you doing? Now guys, this is the video you are going to want to watch. I'm putting about five different videos into one video. You will want to watch this video to find out exactly what is going on with this new, new massive hinge discovered in 2020. We're going to talk about the origin of the, the Union Jack which I, and the English flag and the Scottish flag, which I have to thank a viewer for, for putting me on that trail. Uh, we're going to talk about... Um, uh, we're going to look at a, a tour of um, a tour of Silbury Hill as it looks currently in 2020, the Omphalmus of England, uh, provided by a viewer. You're going to want to watch this video. There is so much information in here and about the way the ancient snake cult worked um, th that the archaeologists will never touch because, honestly, you know why they're not going to touch it? Their brains aren't big enough. I'll give you an example of why their brains aren't big enough. For starters, they're calling this a, a massive hinge. Do you know what a hinge is? A hinge means hang. Stonehenge has stones that hang, appear to hang, yet archaeologists call anything with a ditch or anything with upright stones a hinge. Does that make any sense to you? It doesn't make any sense to me. Now, they've discovered this around Darrington Walls, the place where the Druids lived and sacrificed and ate lots of cattle. We found lots of cattle bones there. They're calling this a, a, a massive new superhenge. And if you look up Superhenge, it's confusing with something found two years ago. They think they found stones there around Durrington Walls. Then they said they made a mistake. Then they said, oh, they've actually found uh, stones here. Now, I actually think someone's been watching one of my videos and have looked has looked at the topography because there's actually a road going around here. And they, they've thought, hmm, what, could, could that road be a massive henge? And they found some ponds. And they, they're saying, oh, the ponds must have had stones. Um, they used to think they were natural ponds, natural circular ponds, but now they think they're stones and they think there was a huge circle here. And I'm saying, guys, this ain't no circle. That's actually two snakes. There's one snake jaw there coming in from the south, one snake jaw there coming in from the north. And they're meeting here at the centre of England. We know it's the centre of England from the, the, the Matthew Paris map, which appears to be a Druid map from 3000 BC, because the Druid colleges became monasteries and Matthew Paris, being a monastic monk, copied uh, previous books. That's what mon monks did. So that's explaining that. Now, um, let's get on to this. So um, one of Matthew Paris's maps is the origin, uh, basically, of the Union Jack, uh, which is very interesting. Now, that's one of Matthew Paris's maps. Um, now, it was a... Uh, someone put me onto this and said, that's the Union Jack. And if you look up... Um, say, the, 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 the English flag or the Scottish flag. It seems the Scottish flag originated in the late medieval period. They say the English flag originated in also in the late medieval period or earlier on. Clearly, it was the Templar flag before that. Um, clearly, I've shown it was Dark Ages used by St. Columba in Dark Age manuscripts from Ireland. Um, where these flags originate is this. England's uh, roads do that. Right? There's the English flag. And if you want to go into Scotland, there's Cornwall, there's Scotland. It always juts off to the right. You have to go diagonally. So there's the Scottish flag, Albion. And of course, Scotland was known as Albion until uh, the, the, the Middle Ages. And um, then all these older names disappeared, Albion being the older name of England. So there we go. Flag of England, flag of Scotland. Put them together, you get the Union Jack. And it appears the flag of England is therefore a map of England, the royal roads of England. And if you look at the maps of Matthew Paris, you see there's one road there going up and down, and then another one across. And the centre, as we've proven, uh, is basically the centre of England up to the wall is Avebury. It is the Avebury location. This map must be from about 3000 BC because that's when Silbury Hill was built near Avebury. We're going to look at Silbury Hill as well. There's the Royal Roads. And here we go. And this is it. Now, this is a north-south view of what's going on. A big snake coming in from the north. That's its jaws there. Big snake coming in from the south. That's its jaws there. You will notice the stones would not have been continuous around this massive hinge. Um, there's J.J. Ainsworth. And 
um, I, I got a real shock when I saw this photo. And um, I believe uh, someone, uh, could be JJ or someone else, said, well, that could be a sperm, the egg, and there's the fallopian tubes, the, the, the ovaries, basically. Um, it's also, I noticed immediately, immediately, it is the, um, the male snake and the female snake waiting to swallow him up. The male snake coming in from the north, the female snake in the south. And I have to thank Michael Dames for writing The Avebury Cycle once again for drawing my attention to this. He wrote this book back in the 70s and he said in the Middle Ages it was thought that snakes procreate by the male snake being swallowed up basically by the female snake. They, they sort of, they kind of kiss and then she just eats him. And... And at the centre, the egg, Avebury, Silbury Hill, at the centre of England, drawn at the centre of England in the map of Matthew Paris. So one snake coming in from the north, one from the south, and that being represented actually um, here, close to 24 miles from the centre at Stonehenge, or what was thought to have been the centre, 24 miles from Avebury. Just incredible. And here we have this ancient law. This is possibly even, I would say, South American. I asked JJ where it is. I, she could, she's been to so many museums. I think she couldn't. She couldn't actually find which one it was from. Just incredible, just incredible. Now, if you want to look up, um, there's Stonehenge down there. There is Durrington Walls. So we zoom into Durrington Walls, and these are the actual walls here. So it's it's kind of a crescent there, and then the walls sort of continue there. It kind of is a circle or, or a couple of crescents. And they thought there were large stones around the outside. They're not sure about that. But now they've discovered these, these huge stones and around here. And you can see, guys, quite clearly, there is a circular road circling Durrington Walls. And that road goes in the middle. It's in the middle of nowhere. And it circles. Look, it circles. You can even see it down here in the fields. It's circling. You can see something's continuing up there. Then it turns into a river. Just incredible. Just incredible. So that is the location of the, the new Stonehenge they've discovered. And that was the the the, the, the earliest Superhenge where that they thought there were there were stones around there. And um, now we're going to get to what a friend has uh, found. And I promised to make this video. So he, I was contacted um, by a chap. His last name ends in the words Lee. So he wanted to plot where the Lees were by looking at Lee Towns. And one of the things he did for starters, uh, or actually later on, was looking at towns ending in the suffix by b and they're all in the north and he found out that in in the viking tongue a b b is a village and it seems he's what he's found is um a map of the danish invasion so as the danes invaded they 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 built their villages and, and towns and they named them after uh, after t uh, names in the old country and this is a map of the, the Danelaw of the Danish kingdom, uh, which was opposed, of course, to Alfred the Great. So you had, of course, Alfred the Great, the, the English, the English, the poor English nationalist king who burns the, the toast and then the, the, uh, the, the hotel keeper is angry with him for burning the food. Um, lots of people know that, that, that fairy tale. Funny thing is that these English opposed to the Danes, well, the Saxons come from Denmark. It was Danes versus Danes, basically. But these are these are a, 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 more, a more modern import, basically. And he's found these are these roads of, 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 of essentially their invasion. Um, just just absolutely incredible. And um, he was uh, inspired um, to do this work uh, by a, a, a video I did where I, I plotted a lee line and I found out it was called the Duke's Lee Line, going between Stonehenge and Avebury all the way north, and that actually bisects the land. I saw that bisects the land area of England, which is just absolutely fascinating. And it's one of the reasons for having a north-south road in the first place. And so what he did, um, what he did next was essentially to take all the, starting with his own town, um, uh, he, he, he uh, named after his own name, uh, or close to his own name, or, or I believe it was called uh, Tankersley or something like that over there, he plotted all the Lees, all the Lee towns, and he came up with this north-south road, which, as you see, is very, very similar to this north-south road here, just out of London, but maybe a bit closer a bit closer to London going through Oxford. So there's another north-south road right there. It looks like that one there, and that is the road that he's plotted here, and it goes up almost to Edinburgh, 
or it would stop about when where the, the Duke line stops about there. Uh, just absolutely fascinating. And he thought, well, that, that's what happens if you go north south. What happens if you go east west? Well, there's even more roads, and and, and so so he started there, and he went um, in that direction. It skirts the border of Wales. Um, and he, he also uh, spoke to me about um, what Lee means. Lee means clearing. So a valley is a clearing, uh, a clear thing you can see. So it looks like a, a, it, it's a seeing. A Lee is a seeing, a, a place where it's clear that you can see where to go. Um, and that, 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 that might be a good definition of what a Lee actually is. Um, and now we're going to go on to Silbury Hill. So the friend that was in the last video and, and showing that, that, weird obelisk in England that was in Devon, built in probably in 1747 or rebuilt. Uh, he also went over to Silbury Hill uh, about a month ago uh, to have a look at it. And um, it was closed until recent times. Um, they, do, they did works on it. It seems to be reopened. Um, and he's noticed very, very strongly, he's drawn this picture, that there were a, a jaws around it. So this was seen as an omphalmus of Britain, kind of like this, where you have the snakes approaching the egg uh, to refertilize the whole country, refertilize the whole land. And they wanted to plot this on a very large scale on England and put it right at the center of England, so that I, I suppose every farm would be an equal distance from this center of creation. So we have something similar to the pyramid religion where, of course, in Egypt, the pyramids are at the center of Egyptian creation um, at the apex of the Nile Delta, about the center of the Egyptian landmass, just as this was placed at the center of the English landmass there, because right, basically right here, there's Sarah's breed right in the center there, because both England and Egypt seem to stem from the Atlantean Atlantic civilization, as we have proven in a previous video, that Egypt is founded literally by Atlanteans, by Frisians, by Danes. This is absolutely unbelievable. So let us now get on to uh, a visit to Silbury Hill in mid-2020, and I hope you will enjoy watching that. I hope you enjoy continuing to watch this video. <sighs> So just to kind of go over what I'm seeing here from from all angles is well lots of little bits all put on but you, you can kind of see how they would have built this they would have built this in in layers like a mastaba style just you know building a a wedding cake that kind of vibe you know you can see these little layers see there that's a low low layer and it goes up and it just kind of notches and yeah some of the other other videos and photos show show different different angles yeah and it does it seems like it's got sides rather than a complete circle but yeah you know 